Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're watching The Legend of Korra. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are watching episode 7 and 8 of The Legend of Korra. I don't know if I mentioned this, but uh, I really love Lin Beifong. I really, really, really love Lin Beifong. Um, and again, I don't have any backstory on her. And it's like, I try not to like run out of the gate, like not liking a character right away or absolutely falling in love with a character right away. And from the second we met her, I was like, I dig her. I dig her a lot. I think this is the reason why. Um, as I've been watching these episodes, I've been relating to Korra a lot because I used to be a teenage girl. I kind of know what this, not like the journey of like being the avatar or being a bender or I mean, the only thing that I can really equate that we really have in common other than attitude is uh, she's from the Southern Water Tribe and I grew up in Michigan. Might as well have been the Arctic. Um, but, you know, I, I see a lot of my younger self in Korra and I see a lot of my older self in Lynn. And I know that like, I come across as very bubbly and happy and empathetic and, and I am, and I'm so happy I get to share that with people. But like that hard as nails side, that, that side that's really tough to get to know, that's actually me in the real world. Like I'm not really like, I'm, I'm very introverted and I'm very, um, I don't let you in my circle unless I really trust you. And, um, and I don't know if that's really Lynn, uh, in a nutshell by far, like, you know, like her having a thing with Tenzin and that kind of falling apart and then having like this close relationship with Aang, you know, like I, I being Toph's daughter, I want to know who her father is, but like, I really like Lynn. And like I said, I can see myself in both of those women. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to call Cora a woman. I know she's still a girl, but like, she's in between that age of where like, you don't want to be treated like a child, but you're not quite ready to be an adult in the real world. And like, that's that's the stage where Cora is. And I feel like Lynn has been burnt by the real world that she might have started off, you know, happy, silly, goofy, fun, free, and, you know, been hardened over time or, you know, she's built up a wall. I know what that's like. And especially I don't know if she's an earthbender or she's just a metal bender, or she's a bender period, because I don't know if those things that like they shoot out, like they remind me of like spidey webs. So I don't know if they're just attached to her or if she just has metal on her and she has the ability to do that. Like, I'm, I'm not quite sure. I would love so much more about Lynn. Uh, I'm really, really liking Lynn, but obviously, you know, her and Tenzin have a weird relationship. Um, and I, I do. What I what I really liked is that she didn't care that Korra was the Avatar. Um, and I don't think she really cared, like, that Tenzin was trying to bail Korra out. I think that, like, Lin is, like, she's she's the law. You know, she doesn't care who you are. Law. <laughs> and I dig that about her. That's not me. I'm very loosey-goosey when it comes to a lot of that stuff. I, I'm not, like, somebody who like is is uh very strict in her regiment i'm very add and i'm all over the place um but yeah i i see a lot of the stuff that i i really like about myself and lynn um and i see a lot of my past self and cora and actually i see a lot of who i am now in cora as well i don't think i've ever grown up um i think i've kind of stayed a kid in some ways. And uh, I, I like to have fun. I like to be silly. I like to be goofy. And I think that that's why I really liked her and Bolin together. I think that's why I like Bolin, period. And I think that's why I liked Sokka so much is because I don't want to be somebody who takes life so seriously all the time. And because I'm really emotional, like Katara wise, you know, sometimes it's really nice to just be light and airy and, and just joke around and have a good time. And I really liked their date that they went on. Now, I don't know if that just makes them friends uh, and no romance from here on out, but I, I, I absolutely adore Bolin. Uh, and, and Mako, I like Mako. I don't think he's at favorite status. Um, and I'm basing this all off of personalities and six episodes. So by the end of the, the entire series, he might be my favorite. I don't know. Um, I don't think he's going to have a Zuko arc <laughs> by any means, but I feel like that there's room for him to open up and be a different person, especially with Asumi in his life. Um, she seems great. 
and she's great with Cora and her and Cora, like they really could have made it two teenage girls snipe, sniping, snipping at each other. Um, and I'm glad that they didn't. I'm glad like Cora's just like, you know, kind of like, well, like feeling a little jealous about the relationship that Mako has with Asumi, but it's not because she's jealous of Asumi. She's jealous of the feelings that Mako has for Asumi and Asumi is great so far. Again, I don't want to be quick to judgment one way or the other. Um, and I, I'm hoping that I really, 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 really love her. And I, I don't think she's a bender. Or at least we haven't talked about her being a bender. And that's fine. Not everybody has to be a bender. I just want to know if they are or they aren't. That way I know like that there's not like a secret power all of a sudden, you know, she's spitting fire around. And I'm like, where the hell did that come from? Like, uh, I just, I don't know about that. You don't have to answer it in the comments. I love finding that stuff out on my own. But things that I have found out um, today on Patreon, Uki, Agi, still didn't look that one up. Um, I guess Sokka in the comics would tease Aang and Katara um, about something like they're Augies or Ugies or whatever. And that's how Tenzin ended up naming his Sky Bison. And that Sky Bison, uh, that they had repopulated. I thought Appa was the only one left because we had the last airbender, the last Sky Bison and the last lemur, flying lemur. And so I was like, well, you can't make any more if there's no more, but apparently there are more somewhere. Um, and I, I, if we got backstory on Tenzin and Tenzin learning, oh, and training, ooh, I don't know if that's a thing. I'd be happy if it was. Yeah. So, uh, a little bit of uh, housekeeping issues there. And then also, I think I said Kaya was Zuko's mom. That's Ursa. I don't know why I said Kaya. I don't even know who Kaya is then. I just assumed it was kind of like a Harry Potter thing where you name your kids after people that were in your life. And, <laughs> oh, wait, Kaya is... Katara and Sokka's mom. It was somebody's mom. I wasn't that far off. Okay. My bad. Uh, here we are. Um, so uh, again, I, I've only, it's only been up on Patreon for one day. So I only got a couple comments that kind of clarified some things for me. Um, but for the most part, everybody's trying to keep everything really spoiler free. So nothing gets put in my head too soon, which I, I sometimes forget about those comments anyway. And then it pops up later. I'm like, oh yeah, someone did leave a comment about that, didn't they? Um, so try to not say anything in the comments about the story going forward. Uh, just this episode or these two episodes in particular, uh, just keep it here, not forward or backward, whichever way that is on that screen. <laughs> anyway, uh, so now uh, Amon, he interrupted the pro bowling championship and I'm kind of really happy that our group didn't win. That would have been a little like fairy tale, like, oh, she joins the group and then they win and oh my God, it's all crazy. Um, uh, I'm, I'm glad they didn't, but then also the fact that, um, not that I wanted Tano to lose his bending, but he was getting very cocky about whoever he was, but they were cheating. They were cheating to win and they got called out on it. Do I think that means that you should have your bending taken away? No. Um, does it mean that you never get to play again? Yes. Uh, and he won't be. Um, as far as I know, this is permanent, having the bending taken away. Um, I, again, I don't know if it's just a blocked chi. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Cause it's not doing the lion turtle, uh, you know, thing coming out of your eyeballs. Um, so I'm, I'm not quite sure. And I'm looking forward to learning more again. No spoilers. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty happy that it wasn't our group that had it happen to them. Um, and I will say that that scene of Cora chasing after and Lynn helping her to chase after Amon and the ship and then Lynn chasing after the ship herself and then choosing to save Cora instead of pursuing Amon. I don't know what would have happened to her. Again, I don't know if she's a bender, so I don't know if she has the fear that he's going to do something to her. Um, if you, if you're an unbender, then you don't fear him on. And then if you still want to fight for what's right, I, I get going after him. Um, and especially if he's hurting people, like, you know, taking away somebody's ability, it's theft. I don't, I don't know the laws on that, but it's theft. Um, it's also a mental fracking. So again, mental health care for these people. <laughs> That's all I keep thinking about is like how broken I would be. If somebody took away my ability to bend, it's kind of like if I lost my ability to walk, like just how sad it would be 
to like have that and know what that's like and then not be able to ever do it again. Like it's heartbreaking. And I know a lot of that comes within. A lot of your power comes from within. So I think if you're resilient, you know, you find a way to get through that. But um, I don't I don't know if these people know how to do that. Uh, I don't know what the aftermath is, if we're going to see more of Tano in his group or not. Um, the fact that Rami Malek did his voice, I don't know if you could just call up Rami Malek and just be like, hey, <laughs> Freddie Mercury, we need you. Um, and I think this was, this was probably before he won the Oscar. Wow, an Oscar winner voice actor. Wow. I think voice acting should have its own category at the Oscars. I'm just saying. Do they have that for the Emmys? I think they do. But they should do it for movies. Anyway. That's that ADHD thing that I have where I just go off on a tangent. Um, Y'all have no idea how often that happens. Nathaniel edits them out a lot. Beep. Okay, so Tarlock. Um, Again, I haven't really made a full opinion of him. Um, It'd be really quick to judge, I think, um, where I, I, I do know that like he really does care what the public thinks about him. But he might also be a good guy, but just kind of like not like the best guy. Um, I, I was still trying to figure that out. I know that he didn't want to have um, anyone hurt publicly. But for as much as I know he could be working with him on, I have no idea. Like he could just be like, oh, well, I'll make you look bad. You make me look good. People will fear you. People will think I'm a hero. And then we'll get rid of bending. But I feel like... I don't, is Tar like a waterbender or is he just from a water tribe? That's the hard thing with like, with Avatar, we were very concentrated with a group of people and we knew what they could do and what they couldn't do. And with, <laughs> with some of these characters, we're not really delving into them because it's such a big world because we're, we're in a city. We're not like, you know, just on top of Appa traveling the world. So I think like when it comes to certain characters like Tarlock, we get like a gradual progression of their character and that's fine. I'm here for it. But like, I'm like, can he waterbend? Did we see him waterbend? And I don't remember when they were um, fighting all the chi blockers. I don't, I don't, this is chi blocking. I don't know. That's also Spider-Man. Um, but <laughs> when, when they're doing that, I don't remember if he was uh, using waterbending or not. Welp. <laughs> I'm just going to pay attention again. No spoilers. And then, of course, like, Korra is starting to see visions. Um, now we have had two episodes where I have seen Aang. Um, I have seen Toph. I have seen... Oh, gosh, I don't know if there's anything else that we've seen. I, I, I do, like, immediately pick up those two people, because, like, why wouldn't I? Um, but I don't know what it quite means yet. I remember that Tarlac was talking about Aang fighting somebody 42 years earlier, and I've already forgotten the name. I remembered it, and then I keep hearing my grandmother's name, and they're not even completely the same. They just begin with a Y. Nope, can't think of it. <laughs> You're not here for facts. And also names are just, they don't, they don't stick as much as I wish they would. Um, but, you know, I, I remember him talking about that. And I don't know if, like, we're flashing back to that. And that's going to help her with Amon. I'm trying to connect Amon to somebody. And I know sometimes I'm trying to put puzzle pieces together that just don't fit. Um, that's kind of what I do. I know it's annoying sometimes for people to be like, it doesn't all have to be connected. I'm trying to connect it. That's that's how this brain works. But guys, I am super excited to get into these two episodes, and I hope that they are heavy Lin Beifong. They probably won't be. But I am really enjoying Korra's journey. I'm enjoying the kids, and I absolutely adore Tenzin. I want to hug that man. Um, and, and again, I, I do see the burdens that a lot of these people are carrying with them, because Korra, you know, like, she wants to be the Avatar, but she also wants to be a teenager. And, like, that's really frustrating. You know, she wants to do the pro bowling. Pro bowling. Pro bending. And, you know, like, it, it's, it's she's torn between a couple different worlds because she still has to work on her spirituality. But she kind of wants to live a normal life. But she kind of wants to be a good bender. And she's also afraid of Amon and losing her bending ability. And I, there's a lot there. I mean, like, a teenage girl trying to figure out who she is, her place in the world, and in trying to have all of her wants, needs, and desires met, you know, like, like she needs to be spiritually closer to a lot of things because she's the avatar, but like, she also wants to, you know, go out on dates with boys and I don't blame her. 
Uh, is there time to do that while you're learning airbending, something you're not really good at because you're very grounded. You're very, very much a good earthbender. And we know that if you're a great earthbender, really hard to be an airbender. She's doing great though. Her training's going well. So I'm really excited to see more of that. I, I love just that it doesn't come easy to her. The other ones did, and that's great. But the fact that like she has to connect spiritually at some point, that would be so hard for me to do. And I imagine it's going to be hard for her to do. And I'm glad that that's not easy. You know, Aang found that to be very easy and earthbending was very hard for him. Um, him not being afraid of firebending was very hard for him. And him finally having that moment with Zuko and realizing that it's life. It's not death. It's not destruction. It's not pain. You know, so there, there's a lot of things that you have to go through as the avatar that challenge you. And I'm, I'm so happy to see it. And living in a modern world. You know, we're kind of in the industrial age here. And, uh, like, there, there's a lot of new stuff that's flying around. You know, it's not just, you don't, I mean, they have, like, radios and... I don't know if they have televisions. I don't think that's a thing yet. It's because it's very 1920s, but I'm sure it's coming. Um, you know, movies or, or whatnot, you know, a lot of that stuff is happening and trying to experience the new world. Like, I can't even imagine an avatar being alive right now and like being able to jump on TikTok. You know what I mean? Like, it's just weird. It's just weird. So I'm just really glad that it's still like not like an ancient world, but a new found world, but not overly modern. But guys, let's find out what Amon's up to. Let's find out what Cora's training is up to. I want to have some goofiness from the kids. Um, I, 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 I want to go out and have some fun with Bo Lim. And I want Lin to just whoop some ass because it's my girl. I love that lady. So, okay, guys, let's get into it. I still can't believe they're shutting this place down. Oh, that's where they live. Great news. You don't have to go back on the streets. Yeah. I talked to Tenzin and made all the arrangements. You can come live on Air Temple Island with me. Oh. Well, we'd love to, but... Asami already invited us to live in Urtahan's giant mansion. No, no, that's better. That's better. From here on out, it's going to be the lap of luxury for us. <laughs> oh, hey, Cora. <laughs> I was hoping you'd stop by. I was just leaving. Oh, I don't want her... Fighting with Asami. I'd love to have you come visit the estate. I have some Avatar stuff to do. Come on, Cora. We all deserve a little rest and relaxation <laughs> after all this craziness. We could swim in Asami's pool. All right, Pabu. We'll see you tomorrow. Asami's great. Be friends with her. Unless she's awful and I don't know it yet. Crackdown? Well, yeah. There's enough evidence here to bury Cabbage Corp for an eternity. Cabbage Corp? What? Well, I'm... <laughs> is it true that Cabbage Corp is conspiring with the Equalists? The evidence points in that direction, but the investigation is ongoing. a girl. We have frozen Mr. Gonlon's assets and are closing Cabbage Corp. Not my Cabbage Corp! Oh, <laughs> uh, it never gets old. It never gets old. But I don't know if that was a setup for her to find specifically to frame him. I trust no one. Tano? Hey, kiddo. I know we're not exactly best friends, but I'm sorry Amon took your bending. I've been to the best healers in the city. Whatever Amon did to me, it's permanent. That's awful. See you around, Avatar. <laughs> Wanted to be like, Avatar. <laughs> I'll chill. I'll chill. I feel bad for Tano, though. Permanent. That's crazy. Aww. Hey, Cora. Welcome to paradise. <laughs> Except someone forgot to ask her father if we could stay here. Oh, well. It's easier to ask for forgiveness than permission. Sometimes. This is the greatest place in the world. Watch this, watch this. Fetch me my towel, good sir. Yes, Master Bolin. Oh, that's gross. Now pat me dry. That's so gross. Don't. <sighs> Don't forget Master Pabu. Wouldn't you, <laughs> <good>, sir? <laughs> So, what do you 
have planned for us today? Shopping. Cora. Stop it. Ooh, ooh, I vote makeovers. <laughs> I have something a little more exciting in mind. Uh -huh. Oh. Heck yeah. Racetrack. Backyard racetrack. Hell yeah. Pretty cool, huh? Way cooler than a makeover. Uh huh. Ever been behind the wheel? The only thing I know how to drive is a polar bear dog. Mm. You want me to take you for a spin? Let's do it. See, will you be friends with her? She seems cool. Yeah! You know what? Who needs bending when you can drive a race car? She got skills. <laughs> she can just trash this car. Oh god. <laughs> that, that smile from Cora. I gotta admit, I had you pegged wrong. Mm -hmm. I thought you were kind of prissy. Mm -hmm. People usually assume that I'm daddy's helpless little girl, but I can handle myself. I mean, I've been in self-defense classes since I was this high. My dad made sure I would always be able to protect myself. Smart guy. Very smart guy. Emergency! Emergency coming through! Beep, beep. <laughs> Bolin. Uh, is there another bathroom I can use? We have a ladies' powder room upstairs. First door on your right. Uh-oh, do you know how to use that? Oh. Wrong. <laughs> no, I assure you, everything is going exactly as planned. Luckily, the Cabbage Corp investigation has bought us enough time. By the end of the week, we'll be ready to strike. Meaning... We didn't get a full conversation. Can't jump to conclusions. You're leaving? I forgot. I'm supposed to air sit. I mean, baby bend. I, don't, I mean, babysit the airbender kids. Yeah, don't bend babies. So you think Mr. Sato manufactured those gloves for the Equalists, then framed Cabbage Corp? Sato's up to something. He does have the means, and he has a motive. Twelve years ago, the Agni Kai Triad robbed Sato's mansion. A firebender killed Sato's wife during the break-in. That's terrible. Uh-huh. Why is it always a firebender? Maybe we should look at Mr. Sato a little more closely. Well, I don't know. It could be a misdirect. Why are they asking Hiroshi more questions? I overheard him on the phone yesterday. I don't know how to tell you this. You don't know I anything. Your father might be involved with the Equalists. Please. I don't believe this. You spied on Hiroshi? What's your problem? Mm -hmm. Boy, yeah. My father is innocent. Just because we're not benders doesn't mean we support those awful equalists. Okay, not benders. Got it. I can assure you, I have nothing to do with those radicals. I overheard you on the phone. You said the Cabbage Corp investigation bought you time and you're getting ready to strike. <laughs> This is all just a misunderstanding. Is resulting it? Resulting from the young Avatar's overactive imagination. Is it? My number one competitor was knocked out of the game. It's providing me an opportunity to strike the market with a new line of automobiles. It's just business. Nothing nefarious. Maybe. In order to put all suspicions to rest, might we have a look into your factories and warehouses? If you feel it's necessary, you're welcome to search all of future industries. He's future Industries, does he have other uh, businesses that they don't know about? Did Hiroshi Sato frame his longtime rival, or did Chief Beifong just plain arrest the wrong man? Did she so erase it? Did it arrest? Has yielded no evidence to incriminate Sato. Okay, okay. I thought they were saying that she arrested Sato. I kind of like this little mystery. I don't care how cooperative Hiroshi is being. I know he's lying. Why are you doing this? Are you that jealous of me and Asami? Oh, what? well, that's a bit much. If you don't drop this, consider our friendship over. Oh, wow. Hiroshi is not the man you think he is. <laughs> that's a bit much, Mako. Jeez. What's up with that guy? Nice. <laughs> if you want to find the truth, meet me under the north end of the Silk Road Bridge at midnight. Why would she share that with them? Well, I 
Yes, <laughs> I guess all three of them showing up, not just her. What do you have on Hiroshi Sato? He manufactured those gloves for the Equalists, and there are rumors he's working on something even bigger. We searched all of you and found nothing. That's because he has a secret factory. That's what I thought. Where? It's right underneath the Sato Mansion. Smart. Well, Mako, Bolin, Pabu, <laughs> get to finding. I wouldn't think Asami would know anything about that either. <laughs> Bolin loves living this cushy life. We have reason to believe there's a factory hidden below the mansion. The lies you people come up with just to persecute my father. Where is your father? In his workshop, behind the house. Hmm. Hmm. Could that be the uh, entryway into the factory? <laughs> it's funny that they don't have guns, but they're ready to metal bend. <gasps> There's a tunnel beneath the workshop. There's no tunnel. Oh my god! Lynn is amazing! Do you think your dad knows about this tunnel? Oh, Bolin. Officers, into the tunnel. Uh-uh. You three stay up here. Smart. Officer Song, keep an eye on them. Ready for that apology, Mako. Oh, poor Asami. Yeah, you feel bad? Sometimes being a good friend and a good boyfriend is just saying nothing at all. <laughs> Watch it play out. Uh-huh. Although my secret lair, I wouldn't have like support banners for the uh, equalist. I'm just saying. Backyard workshop. Whoa. And I'm guessing those are the new weapons. Hopefully Hiroshi's not in one of those. What was that? We need to get down there and see what's going on. Absolutely not. You're staying put until the chief comes back. Maybe let them go. All right, we'll stay put. But can we wait outside or something? It's so dusty in this workshop. If I start <laughs> flames, I'm about to. What? Oh, yep. Oh. <laughs> Did he body slam him? Just stay put until the chief comes back. That sounds very familiar, doesn't it? Why? Because you said it. <laughs> Asami, you should stay here. Mm. We'll check it out. I have to find out the truth about my father. That's why I'm going down to find out for you. All right. And I don't want her to get hurt either. She does seem pretty innocent in all of this, unless it's a really good act. I knew not to trust her father. I'm afraid you won't be able to metal bend that wall, Chief Big Bomb. It's solid platinum. Platinum? So she can't bend platinum. My mecha tanks are platinum as well. Not even your renowned mother could bend a metal so pure. Ah. Uh... Come out here and- And do what, young Avatar? I think I'll fight from inside here, where my odds are a little more equal. I want to see these things at work. You lured us down here. Guilty as charged. Wow. These machines are dope. I just want to say that. They look amazing. Nothing better happen to Lynn. She's amazing. It was amazing to see her, like, be able to see with her bare foot like her mother did. I didn't know you could learn that. But they're also getting to test their machines and see what they can do. Bummer. Oh, not my girl! Ugh. Nice, nice, nice. Tenzin, do something amazing. I want to see Tenzin just whoop some ass. That's awesome! Bolin, Mako, come on. I'd say that was a near flawless test run. Test run.
Hello, boys. We gotta do something. Quick! Come on, boys! <laughs> what about... Not so fast, boys. Oh, well... Hello, Mr. Sato! Wow! <laughs> Sponsoring our team? It was all just a big cover. Yes. And the most difficult part was watching my daughter traipse around with a fire-bending street rat like you. Don't get angry. Dad, stop! Why? These benders. They took away your mother. They've ruined the world. But with Amon, we can fix it and build a perfect world together. Oh, she's so heartbroken. Join me, Asami. Girl. Take it and help free everybody. No. She looks like she could be evil. I love you, Dad. Had a girl. Self defense came in handy. I'm in love myself. I don't blame you, Mako. Let's get out of here. Did you guys get Chief Beifong? Did they get Lin? I don't even know if they got Lin. My middle benders are on their way to Good. Amon. Okay. And it's all my fault. I failed as chief. I'm handing in my resignation. You're doing what no, you can. You can't give up yeah. Like I'm not giving up. I'm gonna find my officers and take Amon down. But I'm gonna do it my way. Outside the law. Oh, I dig it. <laughs> does your offer to live at the air temple still stand? Of course it does. And Asami's welcome too. Aww. After everything she's been through, she's going to need you, Mako. Yes, very much. So go over there and hug her. Why is she all by herself anyway? Oh. Asami's dope. Korra's dope. Lin is dope. Hiroshi. Meh, meh. Oh, God, these episodes fly by. It's not fair. I want more. <laughs> When extremes meet, uh oh. I mean, I'm not big on vigilantism, but for Lynn, I dig it. You're finally here. Aww. Welcome to Air Temple Island. Yes, welcome to my domain. <laughs> oh boy. What's that fuzzy creature? New friend. That is a fire ferret, an arboreal mammal common to the bamboo forests of the Central Earth Kingdom. That's what I was gonna say. <gasps> He's really cute. Yip, yip, fly, Sky Bison, fly! Aww. Thanks for sending the air acolytes to help us with the move. Oh, I thought you were only bringing a few things. Trust me, it could have been worse. Monks live very simply, so... <laughs> oh, boy. You're pretty. Can I have some of your hair? Nope. Looks like I have some competition. <laughs> sleep in those caves down there and that's the temple grandpa ang built and that's the greenhouse where we grow the vegetables we eat fantastic is this an all vegetarian island is that where you train airbending do we have to wear air acolyte clothes do we each get our own sky bison and final question how many trees are on this island oh yes yes no no Ten thousand five hundred fifty-two. well so where are we going to be staying i'd be happy to show you to the men's dormitory i'm a boy <laughs> We shall meet again soon, beautiful woman. <laughs> oh my god, I love those kids so much. Asami, did you know Cora likes Mako? <laughs> <laughs> that animation. No, I wasn't completely aware of that. <laughs> kids are such jerks sometimes. I love it. Ooh. Hey! Run along, Iki. <laughs> oh. Oh. What was up with that? It had like avatar eyes. Good day, ladies. Beifong's replacement, Sai Khan, is going to be inducted Sai as the new Khan. chief of police later. I think we should both be there. Interesting. Republic City is facing a threat like none the world has ever seen. But there is one man who has been effective against Amon's revolution Councilman Tarlock. <laughs> 
And that is why, for all matters involving the Equalists, I will report directly to him. Hmm, interesting. What is that weasel snake Tarlock up to now? Yep. Tarlock, I don't know what you did to get Chief Sycon in your pocket, but I highly doubt it was legal. <laughs> oh, yep. Townsend. Always the conspiracy theorist. Really? Avatar Korra, I look forward to your return to my task force. There's no way I'm rejoining your vanity project. Thank you. You need me, but I don't need you. I'm the Avatar. You are not, in fact, the Avatar. Mm -hmm. You are merely a half-baked Avatar in training. Whoa. Which reminds me, blow. how is your airbending going? Great. Wonderful. Complete breeze. If you will not be part of my task force, then you had best stay out of my way. Oh, he really wanted your help, though, didn't he? I still can't produce a single measly puff of air. From inside. I'm a failure. No, you're not. You just need to work through this airbending block. Mm -hmm. Amazing advice. I'll get right on that. Cora. I wasn't finished yet. <laughs> you see, Aang not only had his bending teachers, but also his past lives to call upon for guidance. Have you ever made contact with your past lives? Can she talk to Aang? Of course I haven't. I'm a spiritual failure, too. Mm. <coughs> See, I can airbend. You may have made a connection without realizing it. Perhaps something you mistook as a dream. Yes, the visions. The visions. I had a few weird hallucinations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And did you see any of the previous avatars in these visions? Yes! I saw Aang. It seemed like he was in trouble. But I urge you to meditate on these visions. I believe Aang's spirit must be trying to tell you something. Yes. <laughs> God, I'm going to get so emotional if we see Aang. Especially because I don't know what an older Aang is. Like, I don't know what that looks like or his voice or... I already miss him so much. <laughs> so peaceful. Oh, Pabu. What's wrong? You can tell us. How am I supposed to save the city when I can't even learn airbending? I'm the worst avatar ever. No, you're not. I just feel alone. No, that's nonsense. You're amazing. Yeah, and remember, Aang hadn't mastered all the elements when he was battling the Fire Nation. He was just a little kid. Yeah. And he wasn't alone. He had his friends to help him. He did. Look, the arena might be shut down, <laughs> but we're still a team. The new Team Avatar. <laughs> we got your back, Cora. And we can save the city together. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, really? Yeah, let's do it. What are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny that I airbended with a sneeze. He airbended with a toot. Asami, you always know how to accessorize your outfits. I figure one way to fight equalists is to use an equalist weapon. Absolutely. Now go away! Whoa! Oh! oh. <laughs> Nope. All right, scratch that. Uh, any other ideas? <laughs> I think I have the answer. Yeah. Aha! Uh huh. Aha! Uh -huh. What a nice little gift Tarlock gave you. Oh my God. You think this will do? Yeah. <laughs> I like the new team avatar style. I really want them to have a different name, but if they're the new team avatar. Fine. They're not the Aang gang. They can't take that name. Officers down. Electrocuted. Chi blockers and equalist convicts are still at large, yep. armed and dangerous. I repeat, level four alert. Equalist Go get them. Chi blockers. Oh. That's them. Let's get them. This is a whole new thing, having vehicles like this in a city. I dig it. Oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> I was like, oh no. <laughs> nice. Ah! <laughs> I love this so much. New team avatar. Help me out. We gotta make this turn. Amazing. They don't know we made the turn. Get ready. Wow. Agile. Oh, Bolin. 
There you go. I assume he's got this, man. It's just tossing him. It's wild. One thing is, though, being in a city, there is destruction, which is kind of the thing I don't like about some superhero movies. Oh, hey, Tarlock. What do you think you're doing? Here, we captured the escaped convicts for you. What you did was tear up the city and impede the real authorities in their pursuit of these criminals. Vigilantes, yeah. That's funny. I didn't see your little task force or the cops the whole time. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for Team Avatar, they would have gotten away. Stay out of my way. She might listen this time. <laughs> She's a teenage girl. That ain't happening. The law I have proposed would make it illegal for anyone to be a member of the Equalists. It also puts into effect a curfew, ensuring all non-benders are in their own homes by nightfall. This is going too far. Yeah, Tarlock. that's what I think, too. You can't punish all non-benders for the actions of a few. Yep. That kind of cowardice will cause our city to fall into Amon's hands. We must pass this okay, law. I gotta do a hair pull. That's how irritated I am right now. You weasels! Why are you agreeing? Ugh. Yep, yep. My, my intuition was correct about Tarlock. <laughs> Bullen, you're always eating. You're like Sokka. Equalists have taken to the streets. Consider them armed and dangerous. Proceed with caution. Is that a trick? I feel like one time it's gonna be a trick. Why is the power out? Yeah. Is it snow? Dust? Is it dust? What's going on? Wait a second, these people aren't armed or dangerous. All non-benders, oh. return to your homes immediately. As soon as you turn our power back on. Yeah! It's just gonna create more of an uproar. You benders can't treat us this That's way. That's right. Please help us. You're our avatar too. Yep. Tarlock, you need to turn the power back on and leave these people alone. You don't have the right to treat these innocent people like criminals. That's right. This is an equalist rally. They're just normal people who want their rights back. They are the enemy. Round up all these equalists. That is dangerous. But if Korra interferes, <laughs> you can't use bending against people who aren't benders. This is so wrong. Good for you, Cora. Okay, he is a waterbender. Hey, let me go! Ugh. You're under arrest! Shock him! You can't do that. She's a non-bender out past curfew, and her father is a known equalist conspirator. Let her go. Arrest him and his brother. Tarlock, you're in for a world of hurt with this. Tarlock! Unless you want to join your friends in prison, I suggest you put those down and go back to the air temple. Cora, it's not worth it. So sad to see your little team avatar broken up. This isn't over, Tarlock. I believe it is. Mm. Take them away. It is not over. At all. Are your friends all right? These knuckleheads won't tell me anything. I'll take care of this. Probably took away his power, too. Psycon, a word, please. <laughs> Psycon seemed a little scared. Three of Avatar Korra's friends were wrongly arrested tonight. They were interfering with police business. Your so-called police business was rounding up innocent people and claiming they were equalists. They should be released, too. Mm -hmm. All equalist suspects are being detained indefinitely. They'll be freed if and when the task force deems they are no longer a threat. Those people are entitled to due process mm -hmm. under the law. You'll have to take that up with Councilman Tarlock. I'm sure we will. Oh, I plan to. At the council meeting, first thing in the morning. You're officially the worst chief of police ever. You don't have to manhandle him. <laughs> I'll get this sorted out. We just need to be patient. But you really are the worst. <laughs> ever. <laughs> I love Tenzin. He's so supportive. Such a good dad. Where's Pabu? He needs somebody to cuddle with. Okay, it was snow. I was like, what is happening? Is it snow? Is it fog? It's snowing. It's cold weather. 
I have a heating blanket on, so <laughs> I don't do well in cold. You and I need to talk. Oof. Leave us. You obviously have something on your mind. Spit it out. <laughs> don't you see? You're doing exactly what Amon says is wrong with vendors. You're using your power to oppress and intimidate people. Yep. Isn't that what you came here to do? Intimidate me into releasing your friends? That's what I admire about you, Cora. Your willingness to go to extremes in order to get what you want. Yeah, you wanted to exploit that from her. I'll make you a deal. You fall in line, and I'll release your friends. That's why you arrested them? I need your answer. You might be able to manipulate Chief Saikon into following you, but it won't work on me. You will regret that decision. You need to be stopped. Mm -hmm. You're just as bad as Amon. I've tried to work with you, Cora, but you've made it impossible. Wow. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. Punching him. Wow. You don't want to kill him. Poke. <gasps> Help him. Still think I'm a half baked avatar? Cora. What are you going to do now? You're all out of water, pal. She's still got blood in her. Wonder if he knows about that. <gasps> I was not serious. Oh my God! Stop my it! Name, Avatar, and you need to be removed. It's not a full moon. How are you doing this? Yeah, how are you doing there this? There are a lot of things you don't know about me. Is that Sokka? Aang? Is he a man? Where are you taking me? Somewhere no one will find you. Say goodbye to Republic City, Avatar Korra. You'll never see it again. Not true. I mean... You can't do this! Let me out! Maybe he'll put her somewhere where she has to go into the spiritual self. <gasps> oh my god! Yeah, what was the whole thing? It looked like it was Toph and Aang. Sokka? Did I see Sokka? Yeah, how was he doing that without it being a full moon? Oh my god, this show! Holy crap. Okay, like I, when she, as soon as she said, like, you don't have any water, I was like, unless he can bloodbend, I didn't mean it. Not even during the full moon. And then I was like, if he can take away bending, like, is he a mon? Not that he took away any bending, but I was like, is that a mon? Like, is he playing, like, like a double? Now I have to pay attention to see if Tarlock and Amon are ever in the same place at the same time. Wow. Okay, so I was like, no, I don't, I want to reserve judgment for Tarlock until I get to know him better. I think I know him perfectly fine now. No, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> he gots to go. Um, wow. And I, 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 I'm a lot, I have a lot of my own questions answered that uh, Asami and her father are not benders. Um, I didn't trust her father. And the reason really is, is like one, <laughs> I don't trust people that head corporations. Um, I think that the majority of them are corrupt and they're doing things behind the scenes. Um, and they have the bankroll to back revolutions and you know uh whether they want to say it's cults revolutions uh insurgencies like there's a, there's a lot of things that they could bankroll um so i automatically didn't trust her father and he seemed like a perfectly nice guy um but i was like mm, don't trust it and i didn't want to really trust asami because of her father and because she comes from a rich background um but i i i'm thoroughly in love with her as well a lot of the women on this the show i like really really like they have a way of building solid female characters even the kids even iki and janora i mean 
Milo kind of has... He's a kid. He's a kid. I mean, the, the whole... The, the gags that they put in of him, like, farting on their hands and everything. I don't know if we need those, but, like, it's unexpected. So, like, the, if there's something that happens that I don't expect, I love it. Um, but even the, the, the children are kind of growing as characters, and they're giving them more of a role. I mean, definitely... Um, I don't know if it's Janora or if it was Iki. I can't think of which one, but they had all the information, answered all the questions, knew many trees were on the island. Wow. I'm going to guess that that was Janora. Now I forget. I feel like Janora's always got her head in a book, so that makes sense. Um... Yeah, but I, I, I love the female characters on the show, and I love the character progression that we're getting um, of the female characters, but also the the male characters. I was like, I need more from Tarlock. I need more from Hiroshi. Yup, got it. Uh, I love Lynn. Oh my god, I love Lynn so much. And not that I'm big on vigilantism and people doling out their own justice. Um, I definitely think aiding the police is kind of okay. Like, citizens on patrol. <laughs> What, what is that from? Uh, Police Academy? Um, like, I kind of get, like, the whole citizen's arrest kind of thing, but I don't want vigilantism. And I feel like that's where Lynn is kind of treading a little bit. And I'm kind of okay with it. I, we keep seeing Toph, and I don't know if Toph is at the top of the um, council, and if that's also where the police force is, but, like, if she was the head of the police force... I don't know. Toph would never let this stuff happen. And 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 I like how they're saying with the, to the chief, like worst chief ever. And I love Tenzin agreeing. I really, I just, I really adore a lot of our characters. Um, Mako though, being so quick to judge Korra, and him thinking that it's a jealousy between, you know, her and Asami is really gross. And saying I won't be your friend, that's gross. That's really gross. I don't like that. And I like that he apologized. I like that it didn't take many episodes for that to happen. And I love that it seems like Korra is very welcoming to Asami. You know, having the little girl say like, oh, did you know that Korra likes Mako? And like, I love the animation of like Korra's like screaming face and then the animation of the door being slammed in the little girl's face. I dig those moments. I love that kind of animation when it pops up. I don't want it all the time, but in those moments, fantastic. Um, but you know, you, you saw... You saw Sami's eyes kind of glare a little bit in the mirror when uh, Korra was sitting next to Mako. So I'm thinking uh, that like sh that, that there might be some tension there. I don't want there to be dumb girl tension over a dumb boy. <laughs> I don't want it at all. Um, but, you know, if it helps them grow closer and they figure things out and they just like they have to work through things, I totally get it. Now, like the machines and Hiroshi having... You know, the, the, and it being a test drive, like I kind of thought that that's what was going on. Um, and the gauntlets, I know that they're just like gloves, but like they look like infinity gauntlets. Um, but I, I like those and I like Asami having that. I don't like them for everybody else having it. Um, but it does bring an interesting element <laughs> to like fighting benders, you know, um, whether it's chi blockers or the gauntlets or, you know, just, I'm sure we're going to see other ways of fighting benders. I, I'm I'm glad that it's not just them like wiping the floor with people, right? And I don't like team the the new team avatar name. It's not Ang Gang, so I guess I'll allow it. But I'm just kind of like, no, <laughs> come up with your own thing. Um, it, like that's that's a little harsh of me because I mean, I actually really like this team, and I'm, I'm sure we're going to add some other people to it at some point. But uh, so far, I dig it. I like that Tenzin um, knows, one, that Korra, not that she's having visions, like she didn't really know what she was seeing and they weren't dreams, but she called them hallucinations. And I do think that it's like like the spiritual aspect of her trying to break through and, and the rest of the avatars that are in there, you know, trying to like, like signal to her like, hey, <laughs> sit down, shut up, be quiet, think hard. Um, <laughs> which again, I'm not great at meditating, so good luck to her. But I think wherever Tarlock's taking her, like she'll be able to access that. And um, so far, like I said, we've seen Aang and Toph, and then we're seeing Tarlock in one of them at like a trial, it looked like. And it looked like Aang was doing something behind him. Aang wasn't bloodbending, was he? I don't think Aang would do that, right? I don't know. And then, like, of course, like, I think I saw Sokka. I think I saw an older Sokka. 
Like, I love that it doesn't lean so heavily on nostalgia, but it definitely makes the people we know and love part of the story because it's part of the history. And, and the history will always inform the present and the future. And I, I like that it's not heavy-handed. I like that they mention Aang. I like that they mention airbending. I like that they're relating her to him because obviously she is, you know, an avatar. So she has Aang inside of her just as much as she has Kyoshi. <laughs> and I see a lot of Kyoshi coming out. That's that earthbender Kyoshi in her. I love it. I love Kyoshi and I love Lin. And guess what? I love that about Korra. Now, again, there's some teenager things that happen where I'm just like, oh, eh, oh, cringe. Because I don't really remember being a little kid and doing silly, goofy things like we would see Sokka and Aang doing. But I do remember being a teenager. And I do remember like having points in my life where I would do something. And when I think back on it, I like literally just close my eyes and I have embarrassment from something that I did 20, 30 years ago. Well, when was I a teenager? <laughs> 30 years ago, you know, like, I, I mean, stuff that I did last week, I can still like cringe at, but like definitely when you're a teenager, you're very bold and you think you're invincible and you think you can say whatever you want and get away with it. And, and the, it's just like, there's a whole level of just like, I, I don't care about consequences and I'm going to do what I want to do. And I, I get that she's a teenager and it's so hard for me sometimes because it reminds me of what it's like to be a teenager and I think back to those times and it's that embarrassment that haunts you every time you think about something when it just pops into your head and you try to like turn away because you're just like oh I don't want to think about that anymore that's sometimes what I feel with Cora, and I feel like a lot of people would be uncomfortable with those feelings or I don't if you don't understand teenage girls, I think you would just see her as a brat and that she has an attitude. And while she is sometimes and yes, she does sometimes, um, I, I think because I've been there, I understand it better. And like not to be the person that's always like representation matters. But like, I don't know if I like ever had like a strong female. I don't I don't even want to say like like it's it's not even. It's not like somebody to look up to, but like there was like no representation of that really when I was growing up. The only person I can think of is Julie from The Next Karate Kid. And 100% like her yelling at Mr. Miyagi and like, you know, listening to music and, you know, caring about boys and like all of those things and like wanting to be pretty, but also being really rough around the edges. Like, like I, I feel like there's only so many real teenage girl journeys that you see that don't revolve around, you know, like, I don't know boys all the time <laughs> it's and i mean we're, we're, we have to incorporate boys because it's part of the teenage way of life but like i i don't know if we've had a lot of that in in media and i i i think seeing more of it would make you understand it better you know i think that like oh you're not supposed to act like that so we don't want to portray a girl like that we want you to act like pretty pretty princesses and you're always sweet and kind and nice and if you're not then you're really really mean but you're also rich and i think that they like take a lot of those archetypes and like kind of dumped them and just said nope not doing that um and we we saw that in in avatar and we see it now and you know i i'm i'm really enjoying the ride but it, i do feel a discomfort and it's a very personal discomfort and I dig that. I like when things make me uncomfortable because it makes me face things. Like that's, I think sometimes too, is that people just kind of go like, oh, that's annoying. And they like, they don't, they don't want to face the discomfort. And I think facing the discomfort gives you an understanding, a deeper understanding of what it is. And then it doesn't bother you so much. So I feel like Cora might be helping me get over my teenage years. Just saying. But Lynn is giving me life. I love Lynn. Oh my God. God, I love that woman. <laughs> I love her so much. And just everything. Tenzin and the kids and, and Korra having the visions and even Tarlock. Like, at first I was like, he's just smug and annoying. And then I was like, oh, no, he is dangerous. The fact that he can bloodbend and it is not a full moon, that is something. The fact that a lot of these people are doing things that they shouldn't be able to do, like taking away bending without utilizing the lion, turtle, turtle, lion, um, like, it's just really interesting and like, like seeing Lynn, like pull out her bare foot and be able to see like her mom did, like her eyes were closed. Like she knows what it's like to blindly earthbend. That's insane. 
And I'm like, should she be able to do that? Or I thought that was very Toph specific. But like if Toph figured out how to metal bend, how to bend with her feet, you know, or like see with her feet, like it's just, I am so blown away about like the stuff that people can do. And it's not just like, oh, you can only do it if you talk to the lion turtle just before you face Ozai. You know what I mean? Like it's just so interesting. What a great show. Oh my gosh. And I'm like, just, I can't believe I have to wait so long before I can watch another episode. Maybe I'll try to sneak in another episode. Who knows? Who knows? Oh, but guys, if you want to watch the full length reaction to these episodes, they will be available on my Patreon and up to four episodes early. That is two reactions. Uh, but in the meantime, like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. How does Teenage Korra make you feel? I know that could be a loaded question for people who might find her annoying, but I would say just look deeper just look deeper or just find any teenage girl. I'm not saying follow a teenage girl around, but like be observant. Next time you're in a Starbucks and there's a teenager, try not to look at it as a brat, but somebody who's like going through a lot hormonally, growth wise, you know, that like you're discovering who you are. You're trying to be independent, but you're not independent because you have to be dependent still. Like, you know, you don't want to be treated like a kid. You want to be treated like an adult, but you're neither one of those things. And it's a very confusing world. And you're trying to find your place and understand who you are. And I will tell you all of that, which teenage boys have a hundred percent along with hormones, but like the hormones that females have of like that buildup the explosion and then like it's it just is doing this constantly throughout our entire lives like it it, it just goes from zero to a hundred and i just like you learn to deal with it and like you you just kind of like experience it and then move on but when you're a teenager it is just amped up to 11 and it is so difficult so i would just say again don't follow around a teenage girl <laughs> but if you like can just observe them through a different lens, I think you would understand Cora better. I really think you would. Cause like I see her and I get it. I get the little pricklies on the back of my neck when I get annoyed or embarrassed by something she says, but it's because I was that kid at some point. I just clearly remember it and I don't like it, but I have to face it and I have to grow from it and move on from it. See, even after all these years, still learning about myself. But guys, I am enjoying this show. My God, I love Asami. I love Lin. I love Korra. Tenzin is the man. Mako, he's great. Bo Lin, he is definitely going to eat them out of house and home. That is still a grown boy right there. <laughs> but I'm enjoying everybody, even Tarlock, even though I don't like him. Uh, you know, Asami's dad being who he is. I'm not shocked. I'm not surprised. But man, great writing. Great story thoroughly enjoying it. So come back here for the next couple episodes. And in the meantime, I'll see ya.